Uh. That's a good opener, right? <laughs> just cold <laughs> just open with the burp. Just a cold open burp to start things out. Oh, man, I'm excited. Uh, driving over here, like, I, I know I was definitely like, we've done this dozens of times. This time definitely feels different, and I definitely got a little bit of nerves. Word. So to help my nerves, I am drinking a shit ton of caffeine. <laughs> that's good that's nerves, how right? that works. Me too. Does it, though? No. No, no that's not how that works how at all. how you power right through it. So uh, I, I don't know how to, like, do openers or anything like that. Would it be helpful if we all, if we all like, <laughs> walked away from the table and then came back to the table and started, like, at the same time? <laughs> or do we not need to do that? Is un- that unnecessary? To get like that energy of like, okay, sit down, go. I mean, do you want to? We can just pretend we're doing it. Anyway. Okay, everyone stand <laughs> up. <laughs> and, and run back. All right, okay. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Right. Hi, you guys. Go. It's, it's been only a week this time. I, I know. I, it, we, this has been a long time coming. I'm very excited that we are going to be starting. We had our wonderful session zero last week, but this week we are actually going to play the characters we have spent so much time thinking about and talking about, and I am ready to get this project rolling. I, of course, am James Schwartz, your wonderful GM. That stands for Game Master. We are going to be playing Paizo's Adventure Path Reign of Winter. Paizo, Paizo. Pathfinder. Yeah. Yeah. it's D and D. For those of you who don't know, this is D and D three point five. So they are better. currently on D and D five. There's a bunch of other stuff and details and nerdage in there that you don't exactly have to worry about uh, because we are all here to tell a story together and have a good time and roll some dice and have some emotions. <laughs> oh, those are great. I know, emotions, right? Yeah. Those are my favorite part. Yeah. So I have uh, been GMing for about two and a half years now. I've run three or four different games, groups of people. Um, I love it. It's amazing. And I'm very excited to bring some of my favorite players that I have had the pleasure of mm-hmm. GMing over those years together for this wonderful uh, project we have going. Uh, I would first like to introduce uh i keep saying uh i don't like that hmm do you want me to cut that out yeah since i'm good, just like cut all of it out since i'm zach and i'm the yeah. one doing the editing yeah that's yeah. right uh uh yeah our resident audio master our audio editor and of course our very good friend zach kreitler Woo-hoo. and he pronounced the last name correctly which rarely happens right. with, other pe- with other people he cares that's how much he cares yeah. hi zach uh, how are you doing hi i'm doing very well yeah Excited? I'm very excited. Cool. You and I started playing this together. We, you weren't running. I wasn't running. You and I no. were players we together. We were players together like for two, about three months. Over two years ago. Yeah, over two years ago. Since then, you've really evolved into the role of, of Lord and God of all he surveys. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I like to think that with over two years of experience uh, building up my God complex, I've become somewhat <laughs> good at maintaining it. <laughs> uh, sitting exactly next to Zach is, of course, Amanda Kreitler. Where else would I be? Uh, any any relation to Zach Kreitler, audio engineer for the Dimension Door podcast? Uh, not at all. Oh, <laughs> well then. <laughs> we, no. want, we want to maintain. Yeah. Like we want the fans. That? We, want, right. we want the fans to think they got a shot with her. <laughs> oh, oh, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Yeah. So so we're not. So we're. What are we playing her? At? So no relation. At all, right. not coincidental last <laughs> coincidental <laughs> rare last name. Rare la- Do you want me to pronounce your last name slightly different? There you so go. instead of Kreitler, be like Kreitler. I hear Kreitler. Kreitler, a lot. yeah. So Amanda Kreitler and Zach Kreitler, <laughs> totally not yep. related by marriage. Right. To- totally. Totally not. No. No. <laughs> Yes, we are. Uh, well, <laughs> so much for that. I don't want anybody else, baby. Hey, oh. you know, if you've been listening this far, you know we've already dropped the storyline. You've bit into it. You're excited, <laughs> and it's already paid off. So we're on a good <laughs> good start, I think. Uh, Amanda was also part of the first group uh, we pathfinded yeah. together, played together yep. uh, before I took over that game as GM. I was poor little uh, Lemrick, yeah, <clears throat> little bard who. Uh, Almost killed the whole party. Yep. Well, uh, <laughs> welcome, Zach and Amanda. And sitting directly across from me, Elizabeth Wilcox. Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. Wonderful. I'm very excited to be here and be playing more. I feel like I actually 
weirdly started out playing out here as the most experienced in the group, but also kind of the least confident because I had just moved out here and didn't know anybody and was just jumping in. And I've grown to love playing out here and I love everyone I'm playing with and I'm super excited to start this campaign. Yeah, should be pretty good. Any yeah. feelings about the state itself? It's, it's okay. Mm. I mean, I like sunshine, so I can't complain. <laughs> yeah. I do complain every time there isn't sunshine, Aww. despite being in the land of sunshine. It's never enough. I'm excited. Uh, for for, for those hot. of you listening at home, we live on the sun. Yes, <laughs> yes, we do. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Phoenix, Arizona is too hot sometimes. Today, uh, man. There's just pool we're in weather. A, we're in April and we and all have like sweat stains on our backs. Yes. Yeah. It's true. It's, true. Yeah. true. That's where we're at. <laughs> That's right. fair. Too hot. <laughs> well, welcome, Elizabeth. And our final player, who actually was not in the original group we all started playing, and he actually started a little over a year later in the second Rise of the Room Wards game I started, because I knew a bunch of people who wanted to play, and nobody ever wants to GM, uh, David <laughs> Miller. Hello, hello. How are you doing, good David? Good evening. I'm doing good. How about you? I'm, I'm good. I'm excited. I'm ready to I'm excited get too. the ball rolling. So you've been in the other game, and we are just coming up on our one-year anniversary in that game as well. It'll be one year in May. That's right. One next next month. Has it been a, a good year? It's been a great year. We've yeah. had a lot of fun. Good. Um, gotten to know a little bit more about the game. And, yep. uh You died once already. That, that's true. That's true. The first the first character died. Yeah. That's uh, always a tough loss. That was hard. Yeah. Yeah. It was more surprisingly hard than I thought it would be. Yeah. It well, was, it was challenging. I am hoping that these characters <laughs> that we are about to introduce don't die within the first three sessions. That'd be nice. It would be very nice. That's kind of up to you, James. It, you know, <laughs> no, it, no, it's it really, is not up no, to me. It is up to the dice. Yeah, so James said it's, it's not a game of us versus the DM or the GM in yeah. this case. It's a, it's a game of us versus the dice. Yes. yes. That's really yes. what we it are, is. We are yeah. all fighting against the dice to tell a wonderful story. I, I am unfortunately the facilitator of those <laughs> Unfortunately? Dice and deciding what the decisions the dice make are based on probability and numbers, bonuses, and characters. So with all of that out of the way, we have our players, and I think it is time we introduce everybody to the adventure we are all going to be Let's playing. Let's do it. All right. So on the world of Galarian, where gods and magic are a fact of life, where dragons are fought and elves and dwarves coexist with humans, we begin our story in the country of Taldor, a once great nation that has fallen to internal quarrels with nobles using small private armies and knights to fight each other over land and power over small settlements. Now, the standing truce with Talbor's oldest rival, the Kingdom of Kadera, has kept things peaceful in terms of war, but no one is certain how long it will actually last. This adventure has less to do with nobles and their squabbles, nations and their wars, and instead with a solemn group of adventurers whose livelihoods are about to be changed and their destinies written down to become legends for future generations to look up to. Between the border town of Zimar to the south and the capital Taldor, Opara, to the north, a small village sits along the well-traveled road. A humble population of 170 occupy the town. The establishment is of mostly humans and has been found to be welcoming and non-judgmental of those who've come through and chosen to join their small community. Living side by side with the elves, dwarves, halflings, and gnomes, the people are primarily farmers and lumberjacks. The village has a local butcher, blacksmith, apothecary, small church, and uh, it's to the various deities of the residents throughout the town. It also has a town hall, complete with a clock tower, which looks over the town square. Now, in the town square, there is a single statue of a beautiful woman sitting in the center. No one in the village is sure who the woman is or why she is commemorated, but many believe her to be the founder of this lovely community, the village of Heldron. It is the middle of summer. The hot sun bakes down on the sleepy countryside. While in the village, everyone is hard at work with their day-to-day -day lives, several miles to the south, an adorable rat folk couple Aww. riding a giant weasel zip about the countryside looking for the warren where they were born some 30 years ago. 
It is 30 years, right? Yes. Just over, yeah. Cool. <clears throat> Ahead, they see a man, burly and tall, slowly limping along the road, headed north towards Heldron. As they watch him in the distance, he suddenly collapses to the ground with a lifeless thud. Oh, gosh. Well, that's not good. Inside the house, still known to the locals as old mother Theodora's, even though Theodora herself passed years ago, her apprentice sits with a deck of cards, concentrating as she lays a three by three grid in front of her. One by one, she turns the cards over, studying them carefully, a single question occupying her mind. A slight frown grows upon her lips as she surveys the cards in front of her. This is a bad omen. The woman's ears perk up as she hears several people excitedly talking outside. A man was found on the side of the road collapsed with deep wounds and signs of frostbite. A traveler sits in the town's tavern, the Silver Stoat, after a long ride through the hot summer day. He orders a pint of their signature Three Devils Ale and looks around. The place is a buzz of conversation, all of which seems to be centered around mysterious travelers that brought a man half dead into their town for medical treatment. Sounds like he's lucky to be alive. The fortune teller says it's an omen of what's to come. I heard the council is posting a bounty to hire an investigator. At that, The man at the bar downs his almost full beer. Placing a coin on the bar, he stands up and starts walking to the door. We open inside of a growing, exceedingly crowded apothecary store. We see a tall, burly man with blonde hair covered in bandages, uh, areas of his face have grown purple or black, mm. and he is sitting in a chair. A apothecary stands behind a counter and is mixing something. And looking around the room, we see five other uh, individuals. One of them is a woman with a square jaw hair slightly graying, pulled back into a tight bun. She is wearing a button-up shirt and slacks, and she is leaning against the wall, surveying everybody else in the room. So tell us, our lovely players, who is in this room? Zach, why don't you start? You see, what you see, you're aware that there is such a thing as a race called Rat Folk. Yes. But what you see is slightly cuter than that. So there's no such thing as Mouse Folk, but this, uh, that's what this would look like, and that's what most people would call this if they saw it. So he's basically a very, very cute Rat Folk. Um, I'm thinking Tom Bosley. Um, Once again, big cheeks. as we keep playing every <laughs> single time, I have no idea who your actor is. <laughs> Really big cheeks. Big cheeks, big smile, like big, very friendly, very welcoming eyes. Doesn't look like he's stopped smiling for the last, you know, 25, 30 years. Um, But if you look him up and down, his clothes that he's wearing um, look like they are intended to be like fancy and ornate. But if you look just a little bit closer, like they're actually just kind of slapped together together. Like, he's got a, uh, a ruffled collar, but it's not really ruffled. It's just like a strip of cotton that's wrinkled up and bunched up. Like, he's trying to, he's, he's at a point in his life where he's trying to project, like, this is, I'm just living fancy and having as much fun as possible. He's wearing a hat that is so fancy it doesn't really look like it fits on his quite, like, friendly, normal face. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, what, what color is his cute little mousy fur? There's a little bit of white, and it's mostly a blend of, of brown and gray. Brown and like a silverish gray. Okay. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, and probably standing directly next to him, uh, we have another uh, rat mouse folk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's probably not as cute as he is, though. <laughs> What's your charisma score? <laughs> not, not, as, not as good as yours is. <laughs> um, 
<clears throat> she is a you can tell she's probably a bit more down to earth because she's a bit more plain looking. She doesn't she's not trying to put on airs and <clears throat> look like she's better than she is. Um you know. What a dick. <laughs> <laughs> Called out. <laughs> oh, she loves you anyway though. <laughs> um you bring the adventure. <laughs> um she's got like brown not like long pants but just kind of like shorts she's trying to be a bit more modest walking around in a town she's not going to just walk around in just her fur like normal when you know they're out adventuring in the wilderness because <clears throat> you know they're covered in fur that's like clothes <laughs> that, that's true that's true so she does have but they're brown and they blend right in with her fur so if you look at her in just for a second you wouldn't actually be able to tell that she's wearing pants. Like when a human wears a flesh-colored jumpsuit? Right. <laughs> you kind of okay. double take. Wait a second. Um, but she does. She has dark brown fur. Um, she's got a little bit of white in the face. Um, and she <clears throat> is wearing... Um, she's got a backpack on. A very, like a smaller backpack. Nothing too too big. Not sure what's... Oh well, you guys wouldn't be sure what's in it. She knows what's in it. <laughs> I'm not, not going to tell you what I'm carrying around. Got some great things in there. Really big, big, beautiful things happening in my backpack. Right. You guys are going to be so impressed. It's amazing. <laughs> <coughs> um, her, uh, her, she's got black eyes. I can't really tell any distinct color. Did you say what color your eyes are? I'm so, mine are pink. I didn't say. Oh, okay. Anyway, so they do look uh, a bit different from each other. Like you could tell they were not born. They are not... Si- Siblings or anything. <laughs> well, because he's a Kreitler and you're a Kreitler. Right. So you're completely different uh, <laughs> exactly. eye colors altogether. Uh, uh, on her right now, um, it, it, she's just wearing her, her pants and then she does have uh, a light shirt on that's a, a lighter tan color. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, in her backpack, she's pulling things out and bandages, things like that, trying to, trying to help the guy who's, uh, who's hurt and... So nothing too fancy. She's not out going for battle or anything yet. So very cool. <laughs> and and sitting next to the two cute couple rat folk is a giant weasel. It is a young giant weasel. A young giant. So it is weasel. small, like like us little rat folk, rat rat mouse folk. It is um, alert, but still kind of curled up. It has <clears throat> red eyes and um, brown fur with tufts of white. Like you can see the, the the fur is changing as it's getting older. Okay. So it's it's kind of a mixture of, of like different shades of brown and some white and um, red eyes and super cute nose that you know twitches. That's adorable. <laughs> and, and her name is Ghost. Oh, hi, Ghost. <laughs> no, it's a squeak, not a snort. <laughs> no, she's she snorts and squeaks. <laughs> she communicates through a series of squeaks and snorts and occasionally clicks. All right. Uh, Elizabeth, where is your character in this room and what does she look like? My character is hovering over the injured gentleman. She looks incredibly irritated that he is trying to be in a more upright position. If it was up to her, this man would still be under bed rest, but situation prevails her name is Vasilisa Morozova, and she's a human woman of average height who looks to be about 30 years old. Her long black hair is typically in a loose braid, and it is right now. It's covered with a brightly colored headscarf patterned in red and gold. She's got pale blue eyes and extremely fair skin that's covered in a fine dusting of freckles. You can tell that she tends to get a lot of sun. She wears long skirts, and they're in all sorts of hues of red and orange and yellow. And over her outfit is a simple leather overskirt. She has two pouches at her waist, one that's full of the odds and ends that she uses for spell casting, and the other that is usually full of whatever herbs and berries tend to be in season. At her neck, you can see two pendants, an ivory carving of a walrus and a simple clear crystal sphere set in some copper wire. She's also got a haro deck with her. She is never found without her haro deck tucked somewhere upon her person. Sometimes she just slips it in at her blouse. Sometimes it's at her belt, but it's always there. And 
she has this lingering scent of incense about her as she tends to burn that whenever she does a reading. Very cool. And does everybody here know what a Haro deck is? I just assumed she was mispronouncing tarot until I saw the actual packaging and it said Haro on it. So yeah. it, is it tarot? Haro uh, is basically tarot in Pathfinder. That's kind of what I... Okay. I met, so you, I met you halfway. It's yeah. the Pathfinder Galarian version of what we think of as tarot. Yeah. She's a cardomancer, so she you know, has her deck and will be doing a lot of things with the cards. And this is Galarian's a world where like this stuff actually works, right? Yes. Like, mm-hmm. uh, Galarian magic. is a world where magic exists. Gods like exist. Like there's many, many gods who have like celestial otherworldly interdimensional power. That is a fact of the world we live in. Here's something I wonder about Galarian. Is it also like our world in that even though these things are real, are there still fakers and shysters and people pretending? Oh, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. But, but why if you could actually just do the real thing? High charisma score. <laughs> I mean, If it's you a don't lot... have the powers, but you have the charisma. Right. Right, right. <laughs> just be a con man. It's a lot yeah. cheaper to trick someone into thinking you've got a working potion than to actually make a working potion. Yeah. So it's a money, it's a profit deal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It all goes back to capitalism every time. <laughs> right. Yeah. Every time. Uh, and the mm. final person standing around in this shop, uh, wh- what's he up to? What's he look like? So if you were to look uh, around the room, you'd notice that there are people that are kind of busy about doing things, and you might you might notice a man kind of standing off to the side. Um, he, he's leaning against a wall, and as he's kind of leaning back, you notice his height. He is uh, he's about 6'10", so he's a little tall. He's a little on the taller side. Fuck. He's, um, he's, he's thin. A bit on the um, almost narrow, you would kind of say. You kind of think of like a tall, thin person as a very good just way of thinking of his uh, his physical stature. He's almost a bit rigid too, and he he seems as if he's he's ready to burst into action any moment. He's kind of pre- prepared. He's kind of got a a sense about him like he's ready to move if needed. Um, if you try to look over his appearance, you'd notice a um, a messy head of uh, black unkempt hair, kind of. Just kind of falls naturally about. It looks like it probably has not been washed in a while, so it's a little on the more rugged, dirty side. He's got a dirty shirt that matches, and uh, a, a vest, a dark gray vest that goes over that. Um, you you wouldn't um, you wouldn't miss the holster draped around his waist. That off to the right hand side sits a pistol, and um, his um, his boots are similar to his dark vest. They're dark gray boots that he wears, and some. Uh, brown like riding pants it looks like it looks like he's been riding it looks like he probably wears the same pants that he rides horses in and continues to travel in it looks like he pretty much just got off the road he's he looks like he's got a lot of road you know dirt and dust and so things the, like that his hair is like messy and dirty but is it messy and dirty like in a sexy way is exactly. it like john so, snow kind of <laughs> so actually so here's the here's the the cast that plays um that mm. plays valdine his name is valdine james has never heard of him um, actually, he, he has heard of Jim Caviezel, so oh. this, that's who you would see. I don't know how <laughs> that is. You don't know how. He's Jesus. How funny, because yeah. it's Easter, too. Spider-Man you pick Jesus. Or Jesus. Yeah. 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 I've never heard of that man before. Yeah. Okay. He's Ac- actor names are not James's nope. forte. They I thought he would know this at one. No, okay. Meanwhile, you are literally more than a foot taller than the average heighted. Vasilisa, the, how much two taller rat folks is he? Could twice stand, as tall. The two rat folks could stand on top of each other and still and be, still be like maybe eye to eye. To... Are you sure that you're a medium this creature? Is beautiful. <laughs> oh, no, maybe maybe look, I'm not quite six. We're small. Giant, I we're small. I, I, a large creature would be seven to would mm. be like eight to twelve feet. Yeah, so yeah. definitely the tall side of medium. And I can't wait to we're, cast enlarge person on yeah. you one day. <laughs> That's awesome. For kicks and giggles. Okay. I could Easy also to pick him out of a crowd, too. And smallify you, reduce you, make you more normal. Ooh, you should reduce the rat folks. So. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we could crawl through Tiny walls. rat folk. Do I just call you giant rats at that point? <laughs> you, the si- t- are tiny rat folk the size of a giant rat? We could go into the air duct vents and we could sneak into the mainframe and chew through the wires. And Oh, this is going to be great. Do all sorts of things. With main There's mainframes and wires in this <laughs> right? campaign, right, James? Yeah. Right? Uh, no, We're no, going to Numeria? This is not in this one. This is not Iron God. This is, this is a Numeria. <laughs> uh, 
uh, electricity, batteries, that kind of stuff does not exist in this world as far as as far as some in this land. Anyway, uh, so that is our our player cast all standing around in this room. Now the woman I said that was leaning against the wall. Yeah. She's got time to lean. She's got time to clean. Is yeah. she just standing <laughs> doing nothing? <laughs> Dude. Uh, she she leaning right next to Valdine. What's going on here? I got the Valdine lean going. You on? know she has been in there, and people just like keep showing up. Um, who was first to ar- uh, the first to arrive? Would have been we brought. Yeah, yeah you guys yeah. brought the man yeah. in here. That is correct. Uh, so so she was just been like you guys brought him in and have just been like going over him and checking. This is the apothecary shop, so you guys are telling her like, oh, you should definitely do this and get this ready for him and everything. And like mm-hmm. you're telling her to do her job, but also <laughs> she's a bit like taken aback by two adorable little mouse people bringing in a, a giant burly man. So she's just like, she's a bit in shock, but she's going with it. And is this female the apothecary? Because there were two. Yes, there right? are two in here. Uh, the apothecary is female, um, but the woman standing against the wall uh, is not the apothecary. She looks more like some sort of official. So you guys bring in this man and you're going over him and you're talking to the apothecary. And shortly after that, um, without knocking on the door, I think uh, Elizabeth, your character, walks in mm-hmm. and also starts doting over the man and talking about a bunch of different stuff, I'm sure. Does that sound right? Well, well, well Vasilisa comes in because she's called for whenever there's need to do any sort of healing. Or, yes. And this is a strange situation where it looks like maybe there's something magical going on because frostbite in the middle of somewhere isn't super normal. So she's checking for magic effects. She's fussing, she's prodding, she's rechecking the work already done by everyone else because habit, very good bandaging, by the way. Your first aid skills are great, I'm sure. I assume. I mean, we are a doctor and a nurse. Natural one. (laughs) Uh, You're very kind to lie. (laughs) So really, that should be more sarcastic. So uh, here we go. Uh, Very good bandaging. It is... I am sure the best you could do. Okay. See, Meanwhile, is, she is redoing all of the bandages. All of your sarcasm was in your eyebrows, and it was a lot. It, it was, was a lot, but I don't think it's going to... Uh, it's true. It might not carry over. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll be fine. <laughs> and then finally, after that, uh, in walks this six foot ten... Giant. Tall drink of water. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I, I think he's yeah, six. Right? I think he's six feet tall. I, th- I think that was a, Wait, type, a typo. Wait, what? <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's a big jump. Yeah, I, I that's think okay. That, I think that's that's okay. lost a lot of height there, but I mean, it was really tall. No, he was that standing was not on a chair. Quite, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, he he takes he walks in and everyone sees him like, whoa, he's six six foot ten, and then he uh, takes two steps down into the actual room, which is below <laughs> oh, <laughs> level. Uh, and everyone's like, oh, oh six yeah. foot. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> um, and meanwhile, so all of this happens in very quick succession. Um, but when the, the tall uh, man walks into the room, the woman leaning against the wall kind of like perks up and looks around and is like, is, is, is this just, so, is this a party did i miss something uh, okay uh so you all sorry uh, go over this again um uh, vasilisa thank you for coming um we were we were just out riding and we just we found him he we, we actually he was he was upright when we saw him but then we saw him fall i see and and where did you find him exactly oh gosh it uh, we were we've been we've been out in the woods for like Four or five days now. I don't. Oh even, yeah, we're checking for our Warren. Um, where were we supposed to be today? Was the I think we were uh, north, just uh, yeah south uh, north south north <laughs> uh, uh, n- like northeast of the town. I think. Does that sound right? I'm not sure. Yeah, it sounds right. I think so. Well, thank you for <laughs> for bringing him uh, here. I we don't have more specific notes. I am sorry. That's that's we kind of just. Kinda, I mean, it took all that we had. Just I to have get him a here. no. We just jumped into action. That yeah. you 
do not own a compass is this correct oh uh there might be one a ghost might have one in his pack in her, in her pack somewhere how about we wait until our new guest regains consciousness and ask him where he was found? Oh, that's very smart. Yes, uh, that is a good idea. And and you are? My name's Valdeen. I, I heard there was a city council looking for someone to investigate something going on. Well, that certainly is a good idea. I was just in the bar and overheard. and came here right away. That That makes more sense. Yes, uh, the the people of this town do like their their gossip in the bar, but uh, they do also have a pretty good bead on things. Uh, There definitely should be a council meeting to determine uh, what is to be done with this mysterious man, but if you are volunteering your services... It sounds like paying work to me. It is paying work indeed. That's why I'm here. Well... That works out well then. Uh, Vasilisa, I, I'm, I'm sorry, and you two are. Oh, I'm Marge. And, and Norm. We're the Gundersons. Oh. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Correct. Oh, yes. Oh, very good. I'm uh, the luck- well, luckiest mi- rat folk ever. Mi- Mr. and Mrs. Gunderson, uh, Vasilisa, what exactly have we found out about this man so far? <clears throat> Well, it's almost like this uh, this poor deer here uh, got stuck in some snow or something. He's got some coldness going on in his you nose, got, you guys his ears. Want to roll some heel check? Oh yeah. Oh. I was gonna like retroactively say that I rolled a heel check, <laughs> um, but that didn't want, wouldn't feel right, you know. I got a twenty-one. Fuck. Sig- oh. Significantly better than my ten. And my three. <laughs> I rolled it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Norm, this this guy has been through the ringer. He has slash marks all across him. He's lost a lot of blood. And uh, he has some kind of deep spike wounds okay, almost. But, uh, but I detect the frostbite too? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you see that That's like certain curious. areas of his body have like definite signs of frostbite. So that's the weird thing. I was looking him over and he's got he's got like cut marks and and he he's got wounds on him, but you could get those anywhere. He's also got like cold wounds on him too, which I don't know if it was like something magical, but you know, it's not that cold right now. No. It no, looks like he's summer. been looks like he's been out in the winter like without enough warm clothes or something. It would have to be magical. That's there is no way anywhere would be cold enough for frostbite this time of year. You said your name was Lisa? You may call me Lisa, yes. My name is Vasilisa Morosova. And you know like when there's magic and stuff, when there's not magic? Yes, I am actually detecting magic on him. That is one of the things I would have done. Oh. Is, there, is there, do I find any magic upon him? Um, You do not find any magic directly upon him. That doesn't mean that he wasn't affected right. by magic, but if... It it's was over. magic. Uh, mm-hmm. It's been too long. There's no residual traces of it. There is no current trace of any magic upon him, but it must have been magic, which caused the frostbite. I it see no other way. It seems real unlikely. I mean, the cold is unlikely. Have you seen no, that's what, what I time mean. It's of like, year? It seems really unlikely to get frostbite right now. It seems it like is. It's months and months away. It makes no sense whatsoever. Oh, this poor guy. You know, all these uh, wounds on him. He's got these puncture wounds, like, real I, deep. Has he said anything? Since no, I wish back? he would start talking. He oh. is unconscious. That Still. would explain why he hasn't said anything. Mm-hmm. Is yes. there any sign of who he is or what what he is? Is there, like, a a knowledge check I could do to identify something knowledge about him? Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's do... Um... Yeah, knowledge local, knowledge geography. I will also take knowledge nobility. Jeez. I got a 21 on knowledge local. I've got geography and nobility. Do you know everything? Jeez. No, he doesn't He doesn't know nature very well. That's me. I don't. I got a 20 on geography, though. Do I know anything about geography? Nice. While, they're, while they're trying to figure out who he is, I kind of walk over and try to shake him to wake him up. Hey, wake up. 
Yeah, he's out. He, okay. Yeah, he's, do he's do he's not super touch out. my patient, sir. Uh, what did you say your name was? Val Valdine. I was just trying to wake him up. Valdine, you typically do not shake a man near death. He... I do not know if you have any experience with this sort of thing, but well, please. Sure, I've seen seen plenty of wounds like this before, but I, I mean, you can he usually... will wake up when he wakes up. Is he wearing glasses? No. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> glasses. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> well, because if he's not wearing glasses, I could slap him, see if I could wake him up. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> but, a, I, but I wouldn't hit a guy with glasses. That's a cool thing to know. <laughs> um, let's talk about those checks I asked you guys to roll. Vasilisa, what did you get? 21. For local? Yes. Uh, Norm? 20 geography, is that what I said? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Nobility, local, mm -hmm. geography? I got an 18 local. Local? Okay. No? Okay. Nope, not me. Um, okay, Norm, you recognize him. I, I think the three of you do. So Norm, Vasilisa, uh, and Valdine, uh, you all know that he is some type of caravan guard, uh, most commonly operating out of Zemar to the south. Valdine, you know this man uh, because he is wearing the signs and symbolism of an Olfin. Oh, so, Valdine recognizes the Ulfin Guard symbols from the city of Opara. Yep. They are the... You want to tell a little bit about what the Go Ulfin Guard are? Yeah. Go so, for the it. Ulfin Guard are specifically trained in the Shadow Schools, and they are the crown, they're the guarders of the Crown Prince of Opara. They're tra especially trained in all kinds of different martial art forms and uh, skilled assassins and defenders. Um, so, I'm assuming he must be, since he's older, he's a retired... Wolfengard. Uh, yeah, you you could it definitely. Yeah. Yes, for sure. This this man used to be an Wolfengard. I can tell by his uh, his, his, uh, his garb here that he's got and his clothing. Uh, I don't I don't recognize him personally, but I'm familiar with the Wolfengard from the city of Wapara. Oh, I wonder what he's doing here. Mm. I mean, it looks as though he probably was guarding a caravan. That is typically what a person who is on the road from Zimar. Oh, to gosh. Apara, typically. Well, sure, but when we saw him, there was there was no one else around. Though, right? No, he was all by no. himself. Yeah. He was by himself. No yeah. one else. Hmm. Um, at that moment, the woman behind the counter, who has been busy uh, mixing things and preparing something, uh, slides a vial like across the counter towards all of you. Um, Vasilisa, you would know that this woman is a mute. Would I also know? I don't know her name, too. Right? You you would know her name. Her name is... She never told us. How rude, right? <laughs> <laughs> her name is Tessarea. Tessarea Willowbark. And you all are in Willowbark Apothecary. Well, how lucky for her to get a job here. Yeah. That seems like a oh. great coincidence, right? <laughs> <laughs> that just lined up. Sometimes the stars just line up just right, you know? Uh, Vasilisa takes the vial. Does she also recognize what it is? Um, she should. Well, it is should, a right? very common item in this world. It is a potion of uh, cure. <laughs> oh, let's see. I know, I'm so good. <laughs> it, it's, it's a uh, potion of cure light wounds. Uh, Vasilisa takes the vial and says, uh, thank you, Tessaria. We appreciate it. And just forcibly pours it down the throat of the unconscious guard. <coughs> oh, there you are. Uh, oh, what's what's going on? Where, where where am I? Oh, you're safe. It's okay. Tell us what you know. Uh, uh, you're in... <laughs> this is typically not the best way to greet someone who regains right. consciousness. You're we are not interrogating him. Oh, oh. You, you, you fell down in the woods outside of... This is this is uh, Helgen. This is just a small little town, but you fell down. I, I made it to Heldren? Yes. Oh, yeah. Good, good. I was... Where's the, the mayor or guard or someone? We do not have a mayor. As though that's the important thing. Just like, <laughs> I feel like Vasilisa says this so often that right. it's what pops out of her mouth. <laughs> uh, I, I am one of the members of the town council, sir. Who exactly are you? What happened? I'm, uh, my name's 
Yuln Orstag, I was part of the caravan guard. He he's still like pretty delirious. Okay, so Valdine Valdine was right then. Yeah, yeah, I was. Y- Yun, uh, where is the caravan that you were guarding? It, it's gone. We were we were attacked. These bandits and these these creatures, these northern creatures. Oh, northerny. Uh, northern, like, what do they look like? Creatures from Opara? No, what creatures no, do you speak no, of? No, far north. Back in the homeland. The creatures of northern descent. There was uh, animals, large, white fur. And there was snow. Snow? Snow? There was snow, and, and they all came out of the woods. They ambushed us. They took the lady. Oh, dear. They, they, they took her and they Ooh. drug her into the forest. Wh- who's the lady? They killed everyone. You must tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Lady Argentina. <laughs> Knowledge, nobility? Who's got time to know about nobles? Really? Oh, no. man. Oh, not me. I'm too busy with the kiddos. Knowledge local? Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. I mean, local, <laughs> I've, I got a 12. I also got a 12. But I got a 16. Valdine is the only one who recognizes the name. Uh, Valdine, the Lady Argentia is, you recognize the last name. She is of noble blood from Opara. Okay. Argent, Argentia, Argentia. That sounds, that's, that's a noble family from a. Opara, I'm pretty sure. What are these? Yeah, we were on our way to Opara from from Zimmer. There's, we came under attack. I I got away, but I think I saw the lady get drug into the forest. I just I, I made a break for it. I, I knew Heldrin was ahead. I just. I, you said there was snow. How far? There's, yes, there was snow. The, well, there, there was, isn't any snow between those two places. Where, oh, where did you encounter snow? It was along the road when they ambushed us. We ran through a, a, a patch of just ice and snow. They came out of nowhere. I, I am sorry to interrupt, but snow and ice already on the ground? Not yes. like... Oh no, a spellcaster is casting snow at me. No, but, like, no, it was, it it was like it was like I was back home. This snow and frost, it covered the trees and the ground. Wait, where One are of the you carriages from? hit a patch of ice. It flipped. It doesn't sound possible, but I, I mean How far outside of town are you? I We we must have been about I I don't know, 6 miles south. Mm. Oh gosh, that's pretty close. I, I'm, I'm from, uh, I'm from Arison. All wait, that, that wait, you are it. telling me you saw creatures like from Arison? Yes, yeah, creatures from my homeland. They were, they were a bit bigger than normal, but just as sneaky and just as fierce. Enlarged creatures, like from Arison. Yes. To the south near the border wood. Yes. The the border wood. Yeah, we were right next to some woods. That sounds right. I knew that there was something bad coming. The cards told me, but this is far worse than anything I would have imagined. You know what what year it is, sir, you if you are from Erison. Oh, you don't you can't be it is decent. You can't be serious. You, you think that. I. It, it is the centennial, isn't it? I will blame the Yadviga and Baba Yaga any day. This year, for this to happen in the summer, it is Baba Yaga's fault. Who are you talking about? Every hundred years in Irison, Baba Yaga 
returns to place a new queen upon the throne. Uh, Baba Yaga is a very powerful creature. She is... She's the witch to end all witches. The mother of all of them. Indeed. Oh, goodness. She's like hundreds of years old? Like the mother of like witches. Like how many, how many? I would say thousands. Hundreds yes. of thousands. Ageless, yeah. you so, may say. <coughs> oh, and why is it every hundred years? The Yadviga are her daughters, and look, it's a lot to get into, but this is the year that a new queen should be throned. And now, snow and creatures from Erison, thousands of miles away from home? How could it not be related? Excuse me, um, Mr. Yun, you're saying that Lady, Lady Argentia was drug into the forest, yes? She was kidnapped? Yes, yeah, she was alive. They were, they were dragging her. She was kicking and screaming. Oh, so maybe they chose their queen. Well, Unless sh- Argentia is descended from Baba Yaga herself. I do not know why they would want her. Hmm. I mean, nobility is a strange thing. She they could be descended. Well, that's true. You never, never know who I you're never descended from. I never understood it. Never understood it. You do that twenty-three and me thing. Could they? All kinds of could they mean her harm? Possibly. I doubt they mean well. I mean, they killed the whole caravan. So yes? then, then she's at risk right now. Even while we're talking. Yeah, she's. Yeah, the lady's in trouble. Like I. I gotta get back out there. Uh, oh, where, the where's my sword? Oh, I goodness, no, no, you're not I ready. I apologize, sir, but you are not going anywhere. Oh, we can all go look forward. Don't I'm you surprised worry. you want to. Don't you want to rest? I mean, we're both, we, we're both been in medicine for a long time, and you look like you need to rest. I, but... Yeah, it's just a flesh wound. He's fine. It's several flesh wounds. <laughs> what will he do? Save her by bleeding to death? <laughs> uh, you guys, we don't. Are, we don't want to lose another person now. Yeah, you hurt. You're right. I and he like tries to like sit up a little bit, and you just hear like one of his ribs crack a little bit more, <laughs> and he just like he goes straight back down. If you rip open one of Norm's stitches, it is your own fault. Oh, I can do it again and fix it. It might just get infected the second time. I can't guarantee, but I could. I could restitch it for you if you need to. No, I. You guys are right. I mean, I. <coughs> He coughs up a little blood. I'm in no position to to get back out there. Well, uh, Mr. Valdine, it seems your arrival was not premature at all. Yes, that's what I said. <laughs> um, Miss Morosova... Uh, it seems you may be somewhat of an expert on these manners. Would you mind looking into it as favor to the town council? I suppose it made sense to send me. No one else really knows anything of Erison around here. Well, at least to to see this area. You know it, and you guys look over, and Yuln has once again, kind of like faded out a little bit. He seems a bit out of it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure what we can take, that we can take what he said with any truth. I would rather have someone who isn't traumatized look at the situation. Ooh. If it is some sort of ice and snow, I think you would be someone who would be able to say with certainty it is like Irisin. This is true. You know I hate ice and snow, but also I love Hildren. I will help. Can I do a retroactive sense motive on him to see if I, th- if I feel like he was telling the truth while he was talking? Yeah. 20. Yeah, yeah. He believed He believes what? He believed everything he was saying. Okay. That's kind of what I figured. Like, he sounded sincere. Very good, uh, Vasilisa, very good. Um, Mr. Valdine, consider yourself employed by the town of Heldron. Oh, that you sounds good. You are to escort and protect Miss Vasilisa Morosova 
to the site of said attack and assess the situation and help however you can. Well, we were going to go out there tomorrow anyway looking for our warren. Maybe oh, we sure. could tag along and, and Well, help I mean, you if out. something goes wrong, we could like help make more fix hands are better. I uh, would not say no to help personally. Oh, it's Valdine. an adventure. Well, our, I love adventures. I don't I don't want to be having to look after, you know, more people. Are you you guys going to be Oh, gosh, oh you don't, don't have mean, to look after us. No. We're old. If we die, we die. It's true. That okay, is perhaps then. the most bleak <laughs> thing you could have said. <clears throat> I mean, we've had our kids in our life. We're just realists. I, oh, we don't live long anyway. We're we're little rats. All right, then. Everyone has to know their place, I guess. Okay, shall we move on out? I will need to pack and prepare. Well, you're not ready? Why would I be ready? You should always be ready. We're, we're ready. We need to get things together and in order to perhaps search the entire forest all right, for a all right. missing go, go ahead. Go, well, go, now, go now get how ready. long do you guys think you're going to be gone for? Is this like a one-day thing? We're just going out, right? We're we, not don't, like, we don't know how long we'll be gone. Well, the we come, you want to come back to town. quite large. No, but you want to come back to town afterwards? Or are you like the guys thinking about going out and staying out there? I think we may have to stay okay. out we should if bring we have to, to we go bring, like, into our the forest. With ghosts to them. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. I, I mean, the journey to the border wood is going to be about two hours. Oh, that's nothing. But that Assuming is just no to complications. the edge of the border wood. Yes, yes the, the border she wood She was itself. drug into the forest, correct? Well, that's what he that's said. That's what he said, yes. Precisely. Do you want us to just go check where he was attacked and come back? Or do you want us to search for this lady? If you can find her and bring her back, that is... A very high priority. I'm glad you clarified our mission, because I always get, I get a little confused about that. Too. Yes. Uh, somebody of that kind of stature is definitely going to... Uh, Alpara is probably going to be breathing down our necks if we don't go and find her. Uh, so, yes, please, find her, save her, rescue her. All Wh- right. Whatever we can, we need to find out what exactly happened to her. Well, oh. we, we'll pack for a long journey, then. Yeah, be All ready right. for anything. I, I shall go ready, Marigold. Yes, uh, very good. Uh, if you would all just, when you are ready, uh, what, two, three hours? Gosh. Give you time to prepare. Meet me in the center of town. I believe uh, one of our, uh, I believe the general store still has uh, a few items that might be very useful for you all. I shall go and uh, talk to them and uh, acquire those for you. May I request that we meet back at Old Mother Theodora's place? Yes. I would like uh, to set us off on the right foot and do a reading for everyone with the harrow. Oh, of course, oh, okay. uh, Vasilisa, of course. So yes. now, do you guys do you guys all need that much time? or Because we could be ready in less if you guys wanted to be ready. Oh, for sure. Less. I can hurry. Perhaps half an hour? I'm always ready. And you said you're picking up supplies for us? Yes, uh, there, there are some, I believe the town might still have some cold weather gear still in stock from last winter. Okay, well, we've got a little bit of gold left, I think, still, if we could. Do you have some gold left? I don't know. Oh, 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 we do, we do, but I think we've got everything we need. Okay, well, no, he's right. We should probably get some cold weather gear. Oh, that's true. If Ms. Tiepen will give us to gear to yes. help us out. Yes, that, oh, that is oh, what I'm saying. Need to oh, pay. gosh, yes. no, I didn't no, want you, to assume. You all are doing a service for the town. We will we will help however we can. Well, that's very, I mean, a penny saved is good for the gander. That's my motto. Oh, that's so for sure, for sure. I wasn't thinking, I wouldn't assume that it was going to be free, but that's very, very kind of you. I have not encountered the saying yet, a penny saved is good for the gander. Oh, yeah. Is it a typical Teldor saying? I have not heard it here in Heldren, but Heldren is ye belt all I have been to see. Oh, yeah, I hear all kinds of sayings. Right. A penny is good for the gander. I shall ask you later what it means, but right now it is like a riddle for me. Right then, I shall run to the general store and I will see you all at uh, Mother Theodore's in half hour. Already ghost. Sounds ghost. good. Come on. Uh, and of course, uh, <laughs> thank you to Saria. We will, uh, of course, reimburse you for the potion. And uh, uh, please do just keep an eye on Mr. Yuln here. Uh, ring the your bell if uh, you need uh, somebody to come. I'm glad Yuln is resting again. 
it reminds me. Remember when Rob had the fever and like he kept wanting oh, no, to get up and go John. play? That was John. John had the fever and he kept getting up and wanting to go play. And we're like, no, you have to rest. And the fever lasted like three weeks because he kept like getting up and running around. Remember that? <gasps> Poor Aria. She was so <sighs> sad not to be able to play with him. Right then. Uh, <laughs> <sighs> okay. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> mm, good uh, she luck. says to uh, <laughs> <That's Vassal. laughs> Um, and she exits the shop. Alrighty, we'll be, we'll be on our way. We'll meet you there. You just gotta go pack up a few extra things for Ghost. Sounds yeah. good. So we rejoin our party in the home known as Old Mother Theodora's. Uh, you all have arrived um, ahead of Iona Teppen. You're still kind of waiting on her to arrive. But the wonderful Vasilisa Morosova has offered to do a Haro reading. So I think you all are gathered around her, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. kind of seeing what exactly it's about. Uh, Elizabeth, do you want to take over for what's going to happen? Yes. Uh, Vasilisa is seated at a table. In front of her is a dark wood box that is polished to a mirror sheen and as people are gathering around and entering the cottage she opens up that box and takes out a very fine leather mat which she lays out onto the table and she pulls out a stick of incense and sticks it into the lid of the box and lights it so there's a a strong scent of incense that starts to fill the room She's carefully taking out the cards and shuffling them, and then she absentmindedly shoves a bunny rabbit out of the way and says, Azalea, please, I am busy right now, although you remind me. And she stands up and goes and fetches a stone bowl, kind of like a basin, and she sets that in the middle of the table in front of her horror mat. She looks around, seems a little bit surprised that everyone's still standing she's used to people who come for readings they know to sit down across from her please please everyone it would help if you would gather around and sit at the table and she just kind of gestures and waits okay i'll sit right next to you hun okay all right now This reading is going to be a bit different than the usual because we are all about to face some trouble together. If you could all gather an item of personal importance to you, something which is marked by your psyche, if you will, and put it into the basin on the table. What does everybody produce and put into the basin? So Valdin takes from his inside shirt pocket a coin that doesn't look like the current currency everyone's used to seeing. It is something else. Um, you don't recognize the symbols on the front or back, but he flicks it across his finger uh, rather deftly. You can, he's got some dexterity to it, and he does a pretty cool flourish with it. And then he looks at it, flips it up in the air, catches it, and puts it on his hand, and looks, looks at the result, and then sticks it in the bowl. Uh, what kind of metal is the coin? Is it It, it copper, platinum, gold? Is it something completely different, like steel? No, it is. It is. Looks like it's a combination of gold and either platinum or steel. You're not sure. It's a combination. It's like it's like a yeah yeah. That's awesome. I love it. Mm, Norms is just a a a stone. It's just a stone. Um, It's a like a black, like a shiny, almost translucent, like onyx stone. Um, but since acquiring it and since it had began, came to have significance for him, he has, um, wrapped a small wire around it once and then another wire around it crossways to kind of like keep it held. And then he can, he, he has a little, a small chain off of it. So he's like able to hold it onto it better. Awesome. Well, <clears throat> Marge is going to, she's going to look at her wedding ring and then kind of sigh and shake her head and put her hand inside of her shirt and like in a little pocket she pulls out a tooth <laughs> dope <laughs> it's an obviously a rat tooth um and she'll put it in the bowl and 
Does uh, Vasilisa put anything into the basin? Vasilisa reaches up to her neck and pulls one of her pendants off. It's the crystal sphere that she wears. It's wrapped in a copper setting and she just drops that into the bowl as well. All right, I believe we are ready to begin. I have two things which I will ask of all of you. First, begin by keeping in mind the question which we are asking of Tiharo. Today, we are asking what is the trouble which we shall face as we pursue this Lady Argentia? What sort of trouble awaits us on our road? So keep that in your minds. And second, I need each of you to choose a card Ooh, to fun. represent your role in our journey. And she holds out nine cards and passes them around and lets each person of the four pick one. And she picks one for herself as well. And if you could please reveal your card. I see I have drawn the cricket. So my role in this journey is the cricket. The cricket is a creature whose mind is quick and body is quick. So something about my role has to do with travel, has to do with speed. Valdine. This is a, a rabbit prince. Ah, interesting, Valdine. You are the rabbit prince. That is a quirky fellow. He... You, you call know, me what now? Quirky. <laughs> represents, you know, the vagaries of combat. Battle personified. Oh. So... I expect that something about you speaks to the combat we may face. Marge, if you will. <clears throat> Mine's very interesting. It's the dance. The dance. That is indeed interesting, Marge. I don't dance. No, I've seen you dance a couple times. It is not necessarily literal. The dance is... More like the dance of the universe. A rich and delicate framework that requires everyone within it to abide by its rules. So something about you is following in step with the rules of the universe. You are perhaps our rule keeper on this journey. That keeping does make us sense. in pace. And norm, if you would. Well, gosh, I, you guys are all just like one thing. I am multiple things. I am crows, apparently. Oh, my. The crows. It is ominous that one of us has drawn this card as a role for our journey. The crows are very dangerous. They indicate a violent taking of that which we love. In oh, no. This case, no, I'm helpful. I, I mean, it may be that there is some risk that either those who love you will soon lose that which they love, uh, or that you may have a violent loss coming to you. As a more positive outcome possibility, maybe you will take a loved one violently away from an enemy. You know? It could... It is not necessarily bad, but I would be uh, cautious as but, we proceed. Now, you're sure all this stuff is on the level, right? Like, this actually... Well, well, could this be from the past? It is a fact that often our roles are drawn from our past history, but this speaks specifically to a current oh. question which we have. Oh, I was thinking maybe it had to do with when we uh, got to our new Warren. <clears throat> yeah, that sounds more yeah. Like so, we because we already kind of been through some of this stuff once. That's true. It may be, but I want each of you to remember what your role is. So, Valdine, keep in mind the rabbit prince. I okay. shall keep in mind the cricket. And Marge, do not forget you are the dance. And then uh, Norm, the, again, the I hope not a bad thing for you, but the crows. 
For those of you listening at home, I am doing none of this. Elizabeth actually has the official Paizo Harrow deck. Yes. And we are actually doing a live reading. None of this has been pre-decided. This this is this is happening on air live. Woo-hoo! So if I don't know what I'm doing, I apologize. That's okay. Wait, so we're I rolling dice fun. and drawing cards? Yeah. Like there's just so much random stuff going on. Hey, don't worry <laughs> about it. Don't worry about it, it. It is a game of chance. It is a game of chance. Pathfinder. Yeah. So Vasilisa takes back the cards from everyone and begins shuffling her deck. Please, everyone, again, remember what it is that we are looking for the cards to tell us. Violent death. Got it. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> maybe on the lookout. Think, no, yes, no. That's, yes. what, that's what you cause. So she Think said you, you make that happen. It, not it could be call. you, darling. What troubles and we may face it. ahead. And she begins to lay out in a three by three grid in front of her on the leather mat that lays in front of the basin, the typical layout of a Haro reading. Now, I do not know if any of you have had your fortune told before. Oh, I can't say that I have, no. In that case, let me explain. These cards represent the past, the present, and the future. I shall begin by taking a look at a p- past. And this may be the past of one of us or of all of us. In this case, Norm, I want you to take particular note. I have turned over the snake bite the crows and the hidden truth. Norm, your role is the crows, so something in this reading is most affecting you. In this case, I want you to consider carefully the hidden truth. That is the card that is speaking most to me about your past. The hidden truth usually would symbolize the ability to see past the obvious, to see the truth that is hidden, but it is misaligned. This means that instead of you being able to have seen something that is hidden, there is a truth that remains hidden from you. So something in the past that is hidden from you is associated with the violent loss of a loved one that your role represents. Now in the present, we have the Inquisitor, the Survivor, and the Courtesan. None of these cards speaks to me more than any of the others. It is more the combination of them together. We are facing a search for the truth. We are facing something like the courtesan, which is two-faced. So we may see something like a survivor here right in the center of our grid and think it is one thing. But like the courtesan, it may be something altogether different. Something happening right now is not as it appears. And in our future, what shall we face as we search for this Lady Argentia? The paladin, the dance, and the marriage. Now Marge, you are the dance. So just as the past speaks to Norm, the future speaks most to you. Oh, goodness. In this case, I would pay particular note to the marriage. And this is not simply saying something like Marge and Norm are married. We are, though. Although it is (laughs) quite significant for the both of you that you are, the cards are rarely so blunt, if you will. In this case, the marriage is more a union of ideas or oftentimes more abstract things than just people. So here, 
there are two things that are wedded together. Now, the marriage is messy-aligned, just as the hidden truth was. So just as with the hidden truth, instead of knowing the hidden truth, we still have a secret with the marriage. Instead of two things being wedded, we have two things being torn asunder. That so doesn't sound good. In our future, we should be careful and watch for a moment when especially associated with Marge, two things shall be torn apart from one another. And then, and then what do we do if we see that? What do we do when that happens? The horror simply tells us what may come. So keeping it in mind, we may make better decisions and push, nudge the future towards what we would want it to be. So... Please, hold on to one another, but also be on the lookout for anything which is two-faced, which is not as it appears to be, which may threaten to tear things apart in a way which we would not want. And then Vasilisa just gathers the cards back together and very, very carefully rolls up her mat and tucks it away. And then... After she's got the deck put away, she reaches a hand forward to the basin and taps the rim. And you haven't been able to see it before, but a number of carved images light up on the rim of this basin. And everything within the bowl suddenly looks as though it has caught a flame. So there's Would you look at that? A burst of fire. And Vasilisa, you know, waits a moment. The flame crackles. And then she says, Now if you all will simply uh, extinguish the flame with me. And she takes a deep breath and leans forward. And... Oh, oh, blow, blow, honey, blow. And the flame dissipates. And what's left behind are the items that were in the basin. They don't appear to have changed. And Vasilisa reaches in and just plucks up her necklace. And it doesn't seem to be burning her or anything. And she puts it back on. You may all take your items. This is a small magic of my mentor, Theodora. Uh, They may give us some luck and protect us as we journey. So please, if you will. Oh, all right. I reach in and I take back my special stone. I, I'll I, grab I the tooth, up, stick it in my pocket. Uh, Valdin picks up the uh, the coin. Says, so you're telling me my lucky coin's now twice as lucky? Indeed, yes. And as you all pick up your items, these are the things you've carried for a very long my time. My whole life. Yeah. It feels different. I mean, normally when you hold these things, like you have like a sentimental value to it that you assign when you hold it. You're like, oh yeah, this thing. And your memories start coming back about it. You know, where'd you get it? Why do you have it? Why is this so important to you? But now when you hold them, there's a strange kind of of buzzing in it that you feel on an emotional level. Wow. Like a vibration. Yeah, like a vi- like a an vi- emotional vibrator. An emotion. Oh God, <laughs> <laughs> this is not after dark. No, we this is before dark. Very yeah, pleased. it's it's a it's like a, a vibration that you can feel like within your soul that exists within this universe because souls exist. Um, <laughs> demonstrably, demonstrably, souls exist in this world. Um, but you you feel it on a deeper level than you've normally felt with this item. And you all do have a charge to use of it. I do not feel that bottle caps significantly represent what we're going to be doing with these. Uh, but for the time being, you all start out with a cap. Woo! Bottle cap. Do you guys? What do you guys think of names? Like it, this seems like a significant enough thing. Maybe it should have its own name, or do you guys just still want to call it bottle caps? Ooh, no, I like another name for it. Yeah, uh, naming things is fun. Naming things is fun. Link it to the campaign though. Have them be like mm-hmm. winter. Winter points or snow clouds or I just call them snowflakes. <laughs> oh, it's very I'm fitting. Use my snowflake. 
Because I don't I'm like a, what I... I kind of like that. <laughs> I'm, a, do. I'm a special snowflake, so yeah. I'm going to use my special snowflake power. Yep. I, I think that's it. I think you I like all uh, <laughs> you all get a snowflake charge. All right. Uh, nice. I'm special. And so the, the energy you feel inside is that charge. It's very cold. It's it, Yes. Oh, it sits against <laughs> your skin or when you touch it, and it feels kind so it, of a little bit cold but it, warm at the same it time. It came out of fire, and yet it feels is cold. now feels cool. Yeah. So the reading happens. Yeah. Um, and as you all pick up your items, you feel this energy, and there is a knock at the door. Yes, come in. Opening the door, Iona Teppen steps in, the woman you all spoke to before, uh, carrying a very large sort of bundle of clothing. She walks in and she she sets it down. Uh, it, where should I, I put these, uh, Vasilisa? I suppose anywhere. We are each going to have to take our own anyway. So you'll set them on the table, uh, but not in a way that it disturbs the basin. Kind of very respectfully. She doesn't just like plop it there. She like takes very careful note not to disturb anything else on the table. Uh, and she will set down a bundle of cold weather outfits. Now, you're sure you don't need anything for this? Like, I feel like we should give you a couple bucks or something. I mean, Well, we do have some gold left, you know. No, no, it, it's fine, really. You are doing the town a great service. I, well, I mean, I hope so. we're going to try. I can't give you all monetary compensation now. For that, we have to go through the town treasurer and that kind of thing. But we will be holding a special session uh, within the next few hours. Hopefully, we will not need to actually wear these. It is summer. I hate wearing furs. I mean, we, we come wearing furs. So, you know, we're not going to need them until a little later. True. I wonder if I would hate wearing fur if I wasn't so used to it. I might hate it also. That's a good thought. It is inhibiting. Know. I like to be warm, but I do not like to be warm only because I am clothed and it is cold outside. You know? Cold can hurt, though. Hurts to the bone. I hate it. I hate it so much I left home. So. I see. <sighs> so you all have your items gathered. Uh, and Marigold, the wonderful donkey, is is saddled with bags to hold supplies, and you all head out of town. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I suppose it's time. Uh, Very good. We're going south, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, you guys start to travel south towards the area that you'll you described, um, and you guys are walking for about an hour and a half. And the road and the surrounding area starts to grow a little bit damp and soggy. And as you guys continue forward, uh, eventually you start to get a slight trickling of water droplets falling from the sky. Uh, Moving forward past that through this, you start to encounter, you know, a little bit of slush and ice flurries. And eventually you guys come across an area that has been completely like dusted with snow. And you look ahead about 60 feet and the white snowy background is a very sharp backdrop, a very high contrast to what looks to be the site of a brutal attack. And we'll pick it up next week. Aww. Aww. I think Marge is going to have some memories. Thanks for listening to the Dimension Door Podcast. If you want to see character sheets, cast information, or read a narrative adaptation written by Elizabeth, who plays Vasilisa, check out our website, DimensionDoorPodcast.com. You can also connect with us on social media, Facebook and Instagram at Dimension Door Podcast, and on Twitter at DimensionPod. This episode was normally edited by our very own Zach Kreitler. 
Oh, uh, you get it? Because Zach plays Norm. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Anyway, additional audio and effects used in this episode provided by several amazing artists. A. Shamalov Music, BD Productions, ARG Sound, Artem Grabenshkakov, Kevin McLeod, Bronwyn Holmes, Robert Austin, 95 Turbo Soul, Johnny Easton, Arn Anderson, Mackay Symphony, Sofk, and White Sand. If you're interested in looking up any of these fine, amazing artists, you can check them out in our show notes or description where you can see the exact spellings of their names and links to various social medias and databases containing all of their delicious ear candy. Anyway, if uh, you want to listen to some more episodes of the Dimension Door podcast, well, you can right now. This is episode one. Episodes two and three have already been posted, and episode four is going to get posted on January 1st in the year 2020. Thank you so much for listening.